Hello and welcome to Fueling Around with me, Jason Plato, and the man I've always wanted to shunt through the barricades, it's Dave Vitti. Hello. <laughs> Fueling Around is powered by Adrian Flux. As the UK's largest specialist insurance broker, Adrian Flux will tailor a quote to your exact needs and help save you money on your car, your bike, or even your home insurance. Mate, that's a cracking line, that. You've, you've knocked up there, Dave. Well, thank you very much. And actually, just to, to let the listeners into a little secret is that when, when Jason was reading that originally, and I said, do you understand that? Do you get that? And he was quite offended, the fact that he wasn't fully au fait with you know, the back catalogue of, indeed, today's mystery person. I nearly gave it away. I'm not going to. Good lad. Well, our guest today is a gentleman who can and indeed does do most jobs in show business. Mm -hmm. Not content with being a top selling musician and acclaimed actor, he's now also on the radio and DJing mm -hmm. at festivals. In fact, taking jobs from people like me and you, Dave. You know it. Yeah, it is, of course. Yeah. The yeah, one and only. You know, I'm, you just wanted to call me an old shunt, didn't you? That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the dulcet tones of the one and only Mr. Martin Kemp. Martin, hey, well, welcome, doing, mate. I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, yeah, yeah, good. All right, listen, it's great to have you on, Martin. Thank you for joining us on Fueling Around. As Jason says, you're a busy man these days. Uh, so talk to us, please. Uh, for those that are watching, we will see that you are clearly in a radio sh studio. Tell us about Greatest Hits Radio and the show on there. Uh, yeah, I have a, a lovely show on a Friday evening, you know, just uh, before Des comes on. Um, I absolutely love it. The whole idea of me doing a Friday night was, uh, you know, I go out all over the country and I do mm -hmm. back to the 80s gigs. I've been doing them for yeah. like three or four years now. Uh, we do it all the time, three a week. Um, we have the best of times, like a thousand people all going wild and just singing their hearts out. Brilliant. Uh, and I wanted to do a show with greatest hits that people can listen to before they go out. Mm -hmm. or on their journey to the gig yep. that kind of matched. And it was absolutely, you know, you know Greatest Hits plays every, every record I love. Yeah. So, um, you know, my heart is in 70s, 80s and 90s. Uh, so it's a perfect match. And that gets everyone in the, in the mood for, you know, mm -hmm. for, for all, all your gigs, I guess. Yeah, of course. That's exactly why I wanted to do it. I want them, you know, going there in the car, they can put the radio on and they can start singing along really early. It's what they call preloading, I think, isn't it? You know, obviously being responsible, but obviously preloading in terms of the excitement <laughs> and the whole build-up to what will be essentially an excellent night out. That's what I think it's all about. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, I think that's right. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, like the, it's like the musical equivalent of an, uh, of an early tequila, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, It's a musical equ equivalent of the bridge before yes. we get to the chorus. Yes, ah, like yeah, it. Yeah, you know it. Martin, I think I know the answer to this one, but in terms of obviously, you know, the acting and the music, if you had to choose one or other and you were only allowed to mm. do one of those two strings to your many bows, which one would it be and why? Uh, I just couldn't tell you that. I couldn't answer that because I see them all as the same thing. I see them okay. all inside this beautiful bubble that we are all working inside called entertainment. Mm. Uh, and you, we can you know, we can uh, choose which part of that bubble you want to sit in. Uh, when I was growing up, when I was in a band, uh, it was impossible because everybody in this country liked to pigeonhole you as to what you were and didn't let you move out of that pigeonhole. Uh, then I went to live in the States for a few years and I realised that people there were allowed to do all sorts of things inside this bubble called yeah. entertainment. And uh, that now happens here as well. Um I see everything that I do as my hobby. Mm -hmm. um, I never see the fact that I'm working. Uh, and that's why, I, you know, Michael Caine, who retired when he was 90, yeah. you know, he lived in that same bubble. <laughs> yeah, he, didn't yeah. he didn't, like, retire because um, he was fed up with it and wanted mm. to rest. Mm. He kept going till he was 90 because he loved what he does. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, the same yeah. as me. Well, that's a joyous place to be, isn't it? Mm. So yeah. the topic of this, obviously, this pod podcast is cars, and obviously you're into your mo motors, and I can imagine that your car history is may maybe kind of linked to the success of Spandau ba ba Bally through ups and downs. Yeah. So, 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 so where, where does it all begin? It all began, uh, 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 my first car yeah. in very early 80s, kind of 1981, I suppose, was uh, a Lancia Beta. Okay. Oh, remember nice. the Lancia? Yeah, I do it was remember. a beautiful yeah. little thing. Yeah. Lancia yeah. Beta and the back, the window. 
back window used to fold down and it was yeah. only that bit that was conversible and it was a lovely little car yeah, um yeah. and that's where it all began wow do you, do you remember the registration number no, no. There we go. <laughs> now, That's listen, the perfect answer. Listen, no. listen. Uh, Jason. I couldn't tell you what the registration number is of my car that I have now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Martin. D D D Dave will obviously explain, sheepishly, is, I guess. This is an ongoing thing that Jason yeah. and I are slightly at odds with because I thought it was quite normal to be able to remember the registrations of cars that you've had over the years. I can yeah. remember the reg of every car that I've ever owned and, in fact, every car that my dad ever had oh, from that's the age weird. of a but, well, exactly. And you're not the first person to say this now, Martin, actually, because I thought it was normal, but a few people recently have said that it's a bit odd. Jason, likewise, is very much on the that's weird fence. So I'm now yeah, starting yeah. to think that maybe this slightly Rain Man affliction of mine isn't strictly normal. <laughs> no, it's not normal at all. It's weird. You know, uh, but when I was a kid, uh, after the Lancia Beta, I was kind of changing my cars every year. Mm. So I would have to hold a million numbers in there. In <laughs> True. Uh, and listen, I can't remember what happened yesterday, let alone the cars <laughs> in, the, in 1980. But, um, you know, I loved changing the cars back then, you know, and I was doing all right with Spam yeah. Ballet, making yeah. a couple of quid. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the only kind of real expense and the only thing that I ever really spent my money on them were, were cars. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you know, there's you a, and me both. We'd have been that's the same, we wouldn't spend, we? Uh, yeah, that's what we spend it all on, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Except, you know, unfortunately myself and Jason haven't had the, you know, rock star success. But I think if we did, then certainly we'd be straight down to the nearest kind of dealership as well, wouldn't we? Kind of getting whatever <laughs> the, you know, just fantasy stuff, like a kid in a sweet well, shop. Well, it was a little bit, you know, because uh, I went from that Lancia Beta and then I bought, and this is one of the cars that I wished I still mm. had. You know, we all had those moments of madness when we oh. sell those beauties yeah. and we wish we had them back. We wish we never got rid of them. And it was uh, a Porsche 911 E. Okay. Really right. old style. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it yeah, was yeah. beautiful. Absolutely yeah. beautiful car. It was, you know, like, you uh, you know, I drive a, a 911 now, but pretty much now they're like go-karts mm -hmm. that you can put into auto and drive them, you know, they just yeah. drive for themselves. But in the old days, in those 911E, 911S cars, you really had to push them. And it was kind of, they were manual, they were only 2.4, so you yeah. had to put your foot down all the time. Uh, the back end was heavy, so you would lose it yeah. around a roundabout on a wet yeah. day. So you had to know how to drive it. And it yeah. was so much fun. So uh, do you much. know what? I totally agree. I mean, I, I know you're into your 911s, me, me, me too. But the old ones did require a certain way of driving them. And actually, they gave you they gave you feelings which weren't nice. You know, if you went quick, the front would start move, wandering yeah. around and almost almost like a almost like a speedboat. But if you if you like like you said, if you if you drove it and you uh, and you told her who was boss they were yeah. brilliant to drive but you boy, always, did they have a temper or you it, always it had, had bite you. it did but yeah. you always had to have your toe down on it yeah. you could never yeah. let it kind of drift no. um which it was more like driving a motorbike mm -hmm. than it was a car yeah, uh, yeah it was yeah. a lovely thing to have uh, and it was one of those that that got away you know uh, i sold for some reason that i can't remember <clears throat> to be honest, so I, I suppose to step up to the 911 SC yeah, that yeah, came yeah. next, yeah. which was the classic 1980s car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my brother had a red one, a red 911 SC, which was the classic yuppie car. Mm. Of the 80s. <laughs> that was with the, the big, with the big whale it? tail off the back of it, wasn't it? Did it have the yeah, big whale? Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, the next one for me was uh, a Carrera four wheel drive. Yeah. Beautiful silver thing. And that had the whale tail as well mm, on it. Mm. Um, but early 80s. And um, it was, I mean, beautiful. I drove it down to, we were recording in in the south of France. Mm -hmm. And um, I drove it down to there. And there was, I drove that. The other guy in the band was driving the Lotus, <clears throat> Lotus Esprit. Yeah. yeah and car. the drummer was driving a Lotus Europa. Oh, right, yeah. You know these small, yeah, tiny do, yeah. little Lotus mm. Europa, yeah. the box yeah, the flat car? flat back. 
beautiful little thing. Yeah. And as we're going down, you know, the, oh, we're passing all the lorries and whizzing past, you know, going 100 miles an hour down the road. And, uh, and then we're passing all them. And then all of a sudden the Europa, like it should, blew yeah. up. Right? Because they always blew up. <laughs> yeah. It blew up. And so uh, before you get into the south of France and saint Tropez, all the lorries that we passed earlier on, they were coming back. They Trust were you. passing us. <laughs> Excellent. I can't tell you about the hand signals they were giving us, <laughs> but it wasn't a wave. Was it? Was it the Lotus Esprit that came out the water in the James Bond film? Was that the Esprit? No, or was that a different that, one? yeah, that was the Esprit. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Was the Esprit, yeah. yeah that that was uh, Steve Norman, the sax player, had one of those, mm -hmm. and uh, the, my other mate, the drummer, had the Europa. But they were both as unreliable as each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great handling cars, though. Yeah, well, what happened when we were racing down to South of France was that on the straight, I would always beat them. Yeah, like, yeah, I would, yeah. uh, you know, the, the power in the 911 would just overtake. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we got into the South of France and it was kind of winding roads, you know, down to Monaco and stuff, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The the uh, lotuses would just leave me for nothing. Yeah, yeah. just on those twist twisty uh, switchbacks and everything. So this is a question for both of you, I suppose, as as sort of two big fans of the nine eleven. And you were talking before about the fact that the old ones, you know, had something about them, and they used to bite you if if you got it wrong. Yeah. Do you find then that the newer ones are they a little bit too tame and a little bit too soft, and do they therefore not have that same kind of punch that maybe the older ones have? Yeah. Yeah, I do, yeah. I, I just find um, it's very easy to flick it into auto and mm. not even bother to putting it into sport. Yeah. You know, sometimes I drive without knowing that it's not even in sport. Mm. And so the revs are, are lower and it changes on its own. It gets used to how you drive. Yeah. So it changes the revs on certain times. It's, it is, they're not as much fun as the old ones. Mm -hmm. You know, the old ones you used to have to push and drive properly. Yeah. I think as soon as we got into, it came out of the SC, they kind of lost it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, see, I, I'm not sure I agree, agree with that. I think, I think they're the best of both worlds now. So, so you can just tune out, cruise along and still be, doing epic speeds mm. but it's yeah you can you. but but if you turn all the toys off and you're a bit brave oh they've still got a bit of a tempo which is great uh, absolutely but but, 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 but the, the the level and the speed is so much greater now the accident is going to be substantially bigger <laughs> yeah you know yeah I mean? of course of course yeah. but we can't drive that fast no, you no. know yeah. the, the engines are so big now yeah. what i think i enjoyed was when it was only 2.4 yeah, or then yeah, it, yeah. when it when it got up to 3.2 mm -hmm. yeah i thought that was when it was at its best yeah mm. um in the, uh, I think it was the SC that got to 3.2. And I thought that is when it was at its best. Mm. Uh, did, that was did, the optimum. Did you ever go into anything leery like turbos or anything like that? No, I didn't. No, it's the car. I will get a turbo one day. The yeah. old 1980s Porsche turbo. I will get one one day. It's the one that I promised myself to buy. Uh, and uh, I've never had one. And uh, I will get it. I will get it. Greatest car in the world. I've had, I've had a few. In fact, my, my, my first was a 993 Turbo S. God, oh, I wish yeah, I still yeah. had that now. Yeah, and yeah. That, and that was what they called the wid That was originally christened the Widowmaker. Yeah, yeah. And Super. my God, was it dodgy. And yeah, was yeah. this was this to do with the lag as well, Jason? Obviously, yeah, yeah. not just the power, but because of the lag on the turbo, that suddenly it would just kick in and, and put you in a ditch. Yes, but but also it was before all electronic toys, you know. Yeah. I, I don't even think it had ABS, you know. I mean, it no, might I don't done, think it did. But it certainly didn't have any traction control. In fact, that was your right foot or your, your you know your fear gland <laughs> would, would, would go off. <laughs> Hopefully, you tune it right. But that would go off and stop, stop you finding trees and stuff. But I mean, I, I spun mine quite a few times on the road. Yeah. Not not trying hard, no. just squeezing the throttle on a wet day, and then whoop. Round yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think it's quite telling as well, uh, Martin, that actually, you know, there's a couple of times when myself and Jason have, have gone to events and we did one recently and, and Tim Harvey was there as well. And I think it's quite telling that when you see professional drivers turn up and their own, they can have any car in the world, right? And these, you know, everything on the market, but both the likes of Jason and the likes of Tim Harvey and many others, they turn up in Porsches. And I think that that just says it all really, doesn't it? Do you know what it is? It's because you can take it out and you can push it and you can have fun in it. 
but it's also a car that you can use every day. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you can park it and you don't worry about it. And it's, uh, I think it's the perfect sports car. Uh, it's something I fell in love with when I was a kid. And uh, like I say, I still have one today, you know. There's a man, Dave, who understands his cars. Absolutely. I veered away from it a couple of times. Well, this is oh, this is dark side. Tell this us. This was this was going to be my next question. It was actually, yeah, it's yeah. labelled as worst car or greatest motoring mistake, but I, I won't be quite so presumptuous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I veered away from it a couple of times. Once, um, I made a terrible mistake one time because I, I was, I, I, I swapped my nine eleven in for. Now, don't laugh. Right, a nine four four. Okay, oh, a nine four four in the eighties. Right, and I bought it, and then my mum and dad used to live down in Bournemouth, mm -hmm. and I drove it down to Bournemouth to see them, and I was so disappointed yeah. in it. On my way back, I stopped in the garage and I bought another nine eleven. <laughs> no way, did you? Yeah, yeah. So hey, I had the nine four four for about a week. I mean, it's an Audi, isn't it? Really. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. well. It was nothing. Yeah. Well, it's a Porsche engine, isn't it? Yes, the 924. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was, was the dog, Volkswagen, wasn't it? Mm. Wasn't yes. It? Yeah. And then the 944 had the proper engine in it, but but it still wasn't the same. And so I so we owned this 944 for a, a week. <laughs> and I reckon, I reckon, I know exactly where you went because I think that you stopped off at that Porsche garage in Chiswick on when you, you got back, it. When you're coming back in towards London, I bet you is that one there that on the right? left hand side, isn't you it? Know yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. I know exactly. Do you, where do you remember what it's called? I don't actually know. The checkered flag. Oh, was yeah, it? Okay, yes. just before you get to the brewery, I know exactly yeah. where you are. The How checkered flag. I've had yeah, enough of this. Yeah. I want one of them again because <laughs> I bought another car from there, which was checkered flag which was probably the most beautiful car that I ever owned. Uh, it was uh, an E-Type 4.2, uh, mm. and it was absolutely perfect. Like, taken back to uh, the metal, galvanised, it was yeah. wire, silver wire wheels, mm. it, was, it was bright red. It was so beautiful. And, uh, you know... I, the difference was, was um, you know, when I had that car, every turning that I came out of, people would let me out. Right. People would <laughs> let that, me out right? and wave to me, mm. yeah. right, and think and just look at the car. And then when I changed it back for another 911, people would wave to me, but just in a different way. <laughs> 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 and then, and then, had you been driving a red car from an Italian mark, they'd be spit spitting on you. Yeah, <laughs> they'd, they'd hate you, but even more than that, it's but a clenched, like, it's a clenched wave, isn't it? It means something yeah, entirely yeah. different. Oh, what, yeah, what, yeah. it's the coffee beans, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of those, but it was probably the most beautiful car I'd ever driven, and it was probably the most dangerous as well. Right, you yeah. know, it was far too fast yeah. for the body and for yes, everything French, that he yeah. had in there. You know, I say it could go 150 miles an hour. If you went 150 miles an hour going past the lorry, you'll be dead. Yeah. You'll be gone. Yeah. You they know, definitely will we'll, we'll so do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I did dangerous. a trip. I did a trip from Birmingham down to Geneva to recreate yeah. the, the famous Geneva Motor Show trip yeah, in yeah. the E-Type. And we had, we, we I mean, did, 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 yes, we did. We got it right up there. And you're right. It felt, it didn't feel comfy. Did you? Did yours have power steering? No. Oh, see, mine had the original power steering, the first type, the the stuff they were using in America was put into this one. Right. And uh, if you went past the lorry, you were you were changing lanes. <laughs> oh, you, know, you had no choice. So, nine uh, levels. Uh, <clears throat> have you done any track track days or anything like that, Martin? Uh, no, I haven't. I always uh, 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 it's something I'm meant to do that I'd like I, to do. You got but, to. Uh, I've never done it because uh, I just wouldn't fancy killing my car. Mm. Oh, you, you know, won't. They absolutely. You, won't. you just need. A, you just need. A, a, you know, some some different tires. That's all. Yeah, I don't want to buy a, a round of tires just to do a track day. Oh, right? yeah, I guarantee. I guarantee you would. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's something I've never done, but um, I will do one day. Yeah, I think not. you should get him out, Jason. I think yeah, there's. But uh, do you know what? Yeah, why not? That's yeah, an, yeah, that's absolutely. an afternoon at Silverstone, isn't it? As long as I can come as well, I'll then we'll have the PR people at Porsche, and we'll get one of their cars. Yeah, that's, yeah, absolutely. Yes. That would be better, wouldn't it? 
Yeah. That is a brilliant idea. Here's a yeah, question yeah. for you, Martin. Obviously, um, your your very um, successful and famous children, Roman and Harley, are they have they uh, um, have they inherited your love of cars through their own kind of success in the media uh, world, or are they not really interested? Uh, no, not really. You know, my boy likes uh, a nice car. He's, mm-hmm. um, he's into his Mercedes okay. and stuff, but uh, you know, not it's not an obsession. I would say, you know, it's nothing. Uh, it's nothing like I had when I was a kid. You know, like the car was the most important thing that you had yeah. to have. Like not just to have fun in it, but almost as a status symbol. It's not mm. like that anymore. You know, yeah. Um, Roman's more obsessed with his work. I was going to yeah. say, I, I think times have changed, haven't they? I think. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think that you know the car is as big a deal now as it was for us. No. To, to, yeah. These days, I don't. I, I think. Don't think. I, I, I totally agree with you. And actually, we've we've sort of had this sort of intimated by people before. And I think it is. It's a generational thing, isn't it? You know, we sort of our own kids as they grow up, regardless of, of their own success or wealth or whatever. Yeah. I think it's just one of those things whereby you can imagine almost in five or 10 years time that they see transport <clears throat> differently. It's not about necessarily owning that set of wheels because they might just as soon have an app and effectively just go everywhere <laughs> by Uber. But, you know, it, it's... <laughs> Joking aside, yeah. but that's the way they see transport, though, isn't it? You know, no, almost I, just I, as a utilitarian functional thing. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, when we were kids, uh, Jason, you you most probably grew up the same as I did, where where all you wanted was a Cortina. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, that was the dream yeah. to get a Cortina, and there was always one kid who had one that um, everybody else piled in the back. I was know? that kid. I had one. Yeah, did you? <laughs> yeah. So, so. So, you know, that was our dream. Mm-hmm. And then to be able to own a, a, a 911 when I was in the band was mm. that bonkers, was the eh? ultimate status symbol, you know. So, so, but I don't think it's the same now. Mm. Now, well, also, I think back then, cars generally were crap. The ones, yeah, which, we, were, the yeah. ones which we, we could afford. So, actually, there was this desire to get out of the garbage selection of cars which were available to us they were slow they yeah. were thirsty they had the heaters didn't work i mean my, my first i had a beetle then a 2cv then another yeah. beetle and whilst it was you know the fun days god they were slow whereas nowadays even even the cheapest car god they're rapido aren't yeah. they and everything works you know mm. got oh. stereo heaters so i think i think the whole technology thing is it's, it's not like it was Oh, absolutely! Listen, when um, my when I grew up, my dad had an old Ford Popular, mm-hmm. and we lived in Islington in London. And it took us four days to get to South End. <laughs> <laughs> we had to stop over in a lay-by and put a tent up <laughs> on, on the way down. <laughs> and and a little while ago, a little while ago, I was looking. I was on uh, eBay, and I saw this old Ford Popular. Uh, that was exactly the spitting image of my dad's. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have all these memories of me and Gary, my brother, sitting in the yeah. back of that, going, doing our Sunday days out. Yeah. And I bought it uh, and I got it home. And when I opened the car door, the the smell of the yeah. leather yeah. Yeah. just took me back to being yeah. so... It took me back to being seven years old with my yeah. mum and dad mm. it was the most incredible thing so and it was it's... a real sh- uh, it was a real shame because I, I i tried so hard to make that car work you know and i i to get it going properly and it was just non-stop breaking down on me mm. uh, yeah. and in the end i got so fed up with it i moved it on but but for the time i had it it was such a pleasure isn't it interesting that old cars they do have that smell well i wonder if modern cars Give them ten years up the road or twenty years up the road. I don't think they'll have that. I smell. don't think. I don't think they will either. And I think it's yeah. because they tend to be far more. I mean, when you remember the cars when we were kids and the cars that our our parents had, they were well for me anyway. My dad always chose cars that he could work on. My dad was never a mechanic, but my dad had a basic engineering background, which meant that yeah. he could do most handy dad kind of jobs. You know, he could change the alternator and he could change the spark plugs. Yeah. He could change the air filters and these kind of things. And that's why he was always a Ford man. 
right? He was yeah. always, you know, I think you were one or, or the other. You were either Vauxhall yeah. or Fords when we were kids, you know, and <laughs> and you didn't really sort of cross cross swords really on that. You were one yeah. or the other. He was a Ford man. He had a Cortina. I then inherited the Cortina. I had a Fiesta. I had a Capri. And every, but these were just cars that my dad could work on. But I think you're right in terms of the smells because they were oily petrol things and they used to give up whereas now they're just sealed units aren't they and you can't really get near yeah. them and do it that way yeah. and i don't think they'll ever smell the same way i tell you what it is i think it's because the the leather seats were infused with weight <laughs> cigarettes <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. I, I remember clearly as a kid right sitting in the back of my dad's full popular and we'd all be squashed in the back with my nan in the middle mm. and my nan would be smoking weight cigarettes mm. like more than you can ever imagine and the car would be filled with smoke no, yeah. and, my, and you'd open the window just a little bit and my dad would say shut the window boy you'll yeah. give, your, you'll give <laughs> your nan a crack in the neck <laughs> and but I you, bet, see I, I I'm now remembering my, my nan and she always had this ability to have a fag on and whether it be in her fingers or in her mouth, the ash was that long. Yeah, she yeah, never yeah. snap off. <laughs> yeah, it didn't matter yeah. what she was doing. I'm sure if she was on the trampoline outside now, yeah. it'd still be on there. Jim. It defied, yeah. it defied uh, that, all um, gravity, didn't it? Yeah, it, it did. Yeah, my, yeah. my dad would always have a box of tissues on the back window. Yes. What was so that about? Could ever reach them. Yeah. What was that about? Why, did, never why did that happen? <laughs> yeah, they why never did they used? do that? Yeah, my, my granddad, same. What were yeah. they there for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know next what? To, next to the World Cup willy. <laughs> <laughs> With the nodding head. <laughs> but you know what? All these, all these nostalgic old memories, and, you know, you often kind of think, is that just something that was left in the, in the 70s or the 80s? But I can, I can sort of say you know in in with pleasure the fact that i recently made a little documentary thing about the four cortina with gaz top do you remember from uh, yeah, from, yeah, the yeah, yeah from the 80s from gareth yeah. yeah and so we actually went back and found a load of these old cars and the beautiful <laughs> thing was that even in the year 2021 or whenever it was when we made this we'd open these garages and it just suddenly took you back and all of those yeah. old smells were exactly yeah. there you know from yeah, these old yeah. mark one and mark two cortinas yeah. it was fabulous it's an amazing thing. And, uh, you know, for the time I had the full popular, I would just literally go in the garage, open the door, sit in there and smell it. Because yeah, it yeah. used to take me back to my mum and dad. And do, you, do you remember the day, those days you had to think about starting the car? Yeah. You had, you had, you had to, to give it some thought, didn't you? <laughs> you had to plan ahead. Do now. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Like, right, okay, right. <laughs> Wait, when I, like, oh, I drove it an hour ago. It's not sure it'll be warm. Yeah. Throw a bit of choke. The knob. Choke? What, what, the, what was I that know. about? I yeah. Know. The battery. You had to make sure the battery was on charge. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. always remember when we grew up, you know, we were really uh, poor when we grew up. My mum and dad never had any money. And I always remember every uh, weekend you actually couldn't go in a certain part of the living room because the battery was on charge, <laughs> ready for my dad to use it on a Monday morning. How good is that? You're banned from that room. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The, 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 the total opposite then, I guess, of this conversation and these beautiful old cars that smell of petrol and oil yeah. is what we have now with the electric revolution. Yeah. We know that obviously you're a big Porsche man, but electric cars, have you? Would you? What, what's your viewpoint? I, I haven't yet, but I will do mm -hmm. uh, in time when the right one comes up. You know, uh, I'm the same as most people. I still worry about the distance yeah. uh, that you can achieve. Yeah. Um, uh, and I do a lot of traveling up and down the motorway and I see the, the uh, electric chargers pull up uh, yeah. at some mm. stations. That's uh, the problem, and that worries me a lot. But yeah. um, I think. If, if you had to go in a Taycan, in a Porsche? Uh, I haven't had a go, but I have got an electric motorbike at home. Okay. Ah, right. Most dangerous thing I've ever been on in my life. <laughs> Is it what? Just because it's so talky. So talky. Yeah. So powerful to, yeah. to get from 0 to 60 is unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. There's no going through the gears. It's like oh, yeah. from, 0, from 0 to a million miles an hour yeah. uh, and uh, in nothing. And it's wow. amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, it's an amazing thing to have and to drive. But it's. Um, it does worry me slightly at the moment, the electric thing. But listen, I'm the same as everybody. I think we're all going to be forced into it. Uh, I think hybrid, to a certain extent, is a more happier there at the moment. Mm. So, motoring itch yet to scratch. Um, 
I'm going to go for... Uh, now, I don't know a number of this car, or, or but the Citroen Diane 1950s convertible. Oh, that's you know that? yeah. I do know the car you mean. It's a real sexy mm. it, uh, kind of French swoopy, oh beautiful. My goodness. Palamine's got one. Yeah. And really? they are they are stunning. It's stunning. The, the most beautiful car I've ever seen. It's the most stylish car yes. that you could ever come across. A... Uh, I would swap everything for one of those. Mm. Uh, it's just absolutely beautiful. And I will own one one day. One day. It's a DS. It's a, a Citroen, DS. So it's Citroen a DS. DS. Yeah. D oh, yeah, that's right. The DS, 1950s, just beginning yeah. of the 60s. Um, yeah, I mean, just, DS. oh, my God. They are so sexy, aren't they? That long body that yeah, kind yeah. of drops into nothing. But you can't, um, you can't imagine that car in any way without the soundtrack behind it. I don't think. Don't, don't you always just you, you, you. As soon as you mention that, already in my head, I've got French swooping music, and I'm going da, through the Alps da, and everything. Da, 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 is that not Argentinian? Who cares? Or Brazilian. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a girlfriend of Panema. Yeah, you mean you mean Edith Piaf or something like that? <laughs> You were doing the girl from Ipanema. I'm, I'm not mistaken, that's Brazil, I think. I think you're right. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Listen, we're just going to have a little momentary detour away from cars for a second. We've got a couple more questions to ask you, Martin. But before we do that, I want to ask you about the book, which is yeah, out at the moment. Tell us for, you know, those looking for something to put on their Christmas list. Tell us yeah, about the, the current book. Yeah, the book is called The Game. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's out now. It's uh, my first piece of fiction I've ever written. Yep. You know, I've written a documentary... Uh, so I've written um, biographies in the past mm -hmm. and I've written film scripts in the past that have been made into movies. So oh, it's right. kind of like uh, um, it's everything, it's all of that and everything that I've learned along the way in how to write fiction. And it was something that I always wanted to go out. Um, this is a story about a 80s rock star called Johnny Klein, who, see, my biggest fear when I was in the middle of the 80s when I was in the band was what would happen if by 1986, you know, we were probably one of the biggest bands in the world. Yeah, for sure. And uh, even if I say so myself, right? But No, but you uh, were. It's a simple yeah, fact. You were. Yeah, it's yeah. And uh, so my face was on so many kids' walls and mm. stuff, and you become, like, super famous in the rock world. But... What would happen if all of that was taken away from you and you had nothing left apart from a famous face? And where'd you go with that? Mm. You know, how, how do you live and get back into normal life? And what would be the what would the rest of your life be like if you were stuck with that hindrance of a famous face? Yeah, that's an um, interesting and concept. Isn't so it? it was something. It was a, something that scared me all the way through the eighties. Um, so I thought that would be a nice premise for a book. Mm. And so you're obviously writing a story about Johnny Klein, who is the protagonist here. It's you're allowed to heighten everything mm. and to take him to places that are in your imagination. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's been such a brilliant process. You know, how, how long it. did that take? Probably on and off for about a year. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. On and off, you know, I can't tell you exactly because uh, you know I, I do other things, so it's mm, not yeah, like sure. I can lock myself away in a room uh, and just write nonstop. But on and off for about a year, it took me. And was it a uh, process that you enjoyed? Can you see yourself because obviously it's a very very different discipline to writing a biography. Can you see yourself doing yeah. more fiction work? Oh, I would love to do it. Mm. You know, I spent a long time in just after I shot the Cray Swim film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went out and lived in uh, Los Angeles for a long time, for about three years. Mm -hmm. And um, I was reading tons and tons of scripts. Now, when you get a script written in Britain, it's pretty much written in bullet point form. Yeah. Right? right. So it leaves like your, the imagination up to the actor, mm -hmm. how they want to put it in. Mm -hmm. When you read something that's written in the States, right, those big, big movies, they are works of art. They are oh, absolutely right. beautiful. It's like reading the best book you can ever imagine. Uh, and I think my writing came from reading a lot of those scripts. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, wow, that's interesting, isn't it? The other thing, you know, was was while I was out there in Los Angeles, I got into this thing uh, of flotation tanks. 
Have you right. ever been in one of those? No, no. no. no Have you ever tried, never tried it, right? I've heard well, of them, but I don't really, know, still, I don't really don't. know what they are, to be honest with you. Well, I'll tell you, I'll explain it, mm. right? It's a little tank mm -hmm. that you close the door on. It's got about a foot of water in it. So it's pitch black, foot of water. The water is exactly the same temperature as your body, as your skin. Yeah. Uh, so you can't feel yourself floating in the water. Okay. Right? In the salt water. Mm -hmm. Um. And then uh, what happens is uh, your the side of your brain that uh, you know works on things that are directly in front of you closes down, and you are left with your imagination. Is that and your right? imagination runs wild, ah. and it is it's kind of like um, uh, being a Tibetan monk who's been practicing meditation for years, mm. but you get to cheat and you get to yeah, the top you fast forward away. away. Yeah, 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 you fast forward to the top. I'm, I'm and, tell you what, I'm th thinking Minority Report. Oh yeah, it's it's, uh, that, it's that, are those, honestly uh, muses it in that suspended mm. little bit of water. Yes, and it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful, but don't do it because it's most probably disgusting in the water. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't like to think what goes on in that water. Yeah. So, so, so anyway, I spent a long time using those when I was out in, in the States. Oh. And what, so what I've found now is when I get in the bath, I can kind of trigger myself into using my imagination in the same way. And that's where I kind of come up with a lot of ideas. That is that right? The book. How much, how, how much salt, salt, salt do you buy in your, in your, in your weekly shop then? Obviously a lot. No, no, I didn't put the salt <laughs> in. Someone else puts the salt in. You oh. go to the flotation tank centre. <laughs> I know what I want about you in your bath. He's not buying those big, buckets of salt in. Those big blocks like my mum gets for a water softener. It's not like that, Chase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you put a bag. <laughs> yeah, Martin's gone mentally throwing bricks in the bath. What's wrong with him? <laughs> oh, yeah. Shirley's wondering why her skin's drying out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, listen, Martin, we've got a couple more questions before we let you go, because you're a busy man, what with everything that's going on. Right, here's the first of two. Of all the cars you've ever owned, you need to pick one and one only because a repo man or something's going to take all the rest of them away, right? One and one only and stick with it for the rest of your days. Which one is it and why? Uh, I am going to go for the beautiful E-Type that I had. Ah, yes. Hey. I would go back there, no matter how dangerous it was to drive. Like I say, it was the only car I've ever had where people let me in, let <sighs> me out of turnings and waved to me nicely. Mm. Um, I would go back to the E-Type. You know, the funny thing about it, you know, I used to use that car all the time to, to you know, run the shops. I would use it as an everyday car. It wasn't just a special thing that I got out of yeah. the garage and and used on a weekend on a on a country road. Mm. This was a car I used every day, uh, and I would go back there. That's well, the one I'll that got away what, for me. You're mm. in great company because we interviewed Jensen B B Button just the other day, and guess yeah. what? That was his chosen car. Mm. Was it? Yeah. yeah it was, it's yeah. a yeah. it's a thing of beauty. You know, it's absolutely, do you know, it's, for me, there's two things that artistically really please me when I look at them. Um, and that's the E-Type and a Spitfire. And the mm. two things go together. Don't yeah, they? It's yeah. the styling yeah, they of them. I would yeah. keep the E-Type any day. Well, also, Jason, didn't you say, was it was it Enzo Ferrari that described the E-Type as the, the most beautiful car ever? the most beautiful car that's ever been created. Which I tell you was, what. That it was is. from Enzo. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. A, it's the most beautiful car yeah. I've ever had. Uh, it's yeah. the most beautiful car that I think has ever been made. So here's, here's sadly our final question, but I think it's a belter. It's definitely up your strass. Yeah. And that is, we believe that music and cars, you know, really well suited and they go together. So imagine your fantasy drive. It could be anywhere in the world. Yeah. I want to know where you're going, yeah. what, what you're listening to, and most importantly, what you're driving. Okay. So my fantasy drive always is along the south of France coast. It would be going from the edge of south of France, uh, waking up in the morning, having my croissant, and then driving into Monaco mm -hmm. yeah. through those tunnels. Yeah. Right? You know where I am. Windows yeah. down. Doing, yeah. yeah, doing a little bit of gaming in Monaco yeah. and then oh, driving right. the rest of the way into Italy for a bowl of pasta, fresh pasta in the evening. That would be my absolute, that is my absolute favorite drive in the world. Mm. I would be driving the old E-Type 
Good right? lad. That is the perfect car for that. And I would be listening to uh, Don't Stop Believing. Oh, by Journey, really? Journey. Really? Yeah. I'd be listening to that. Uh, and that sounds like a perfect day to me. It sounds like a perfect day to me as well and a perfect way to end this, Jason, I think. And the only thing that we would need to do is perhaps be there by that little harbour in Italy with a nice bowl of pasta and a couple of cold beers waiting for him to arrive. Yeah, oh. you can be there any day, you guys. You do you know, know what? That that's I've done that trip. It's mm. epic. So it's I. beautiful, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. The only pop pop problem is I had to stop halfway along because I'd eaten too many croissants. <laughs> <laughs> A little halfway stop. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We've 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 just painted this idyllic motoring picture in one of the most beautiful and picturesque parts of the world and now all I we can think about is, is you stopped at the services <laughs> because you've got a slightly bad ton from all the croissants jason Plato. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, I, had to stop, uh, I had to stop there because i had terrible wind <laughs> <laughs> jason take us out please uh, well unfortunately that is it for this week's fueling around we you know we can have spoken all day long so that's it for this week's Fueling Around, powered by Adrian Flux. As the UK's largest specialist insurance broker, Adrian Flux will tailor a quote to your exact needs and help you save you money on your car, your bike, or even your home insurance. Dave, as always, thanks to you. But a huge thanks to our special guest this week, the one and only Mr. Martin Kemp. Thank you, Martin. Oh, thank you, guys. Listen, really enjoyed that. No, it's been excellent. Thank you so much. Don't forget, you can catch Martin on Greatest Hits Radio. You can see him at any number of live gig events coming up towards the end of the year. And obviously his book, The Game, is out in all good bookshops and even some bad bookshops now. Don't also forget, you can get in touch with us on Twitter at Jason Plater, at David Vitti. And if you've liked what you've heard, feel free to give us a five-star rating, press the follow button and share the podcast on all your socials. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll catch you next time. Ta-da! Ta-da!